You probably know what middleware is, but if you don't, here's a short explanation. It's a way to introduce behavior before or after an HTTP request coming into your API. But how would you add middleware to an HTTP client request? Well, that's what we're going to answer in this video. I have a small application that exposes one endpoint that allows you to fetch a GitHub user based on their username. We're using the GitHub service to talk to the GitHub API and get back the user information. Now, GitHub service is a typed HTTP client and it gets a configured HTTP client instance, which can then be used to make the call to the GitHub API and get back the user based on the username. If you're wondering how to configure a typed HTTP client, it's really straightforward. All you have to do is say, add HTTP client, specify your type. In this case, this is GitHub service. And optionally, you can provide some configuration that you want applied on the HTTP client instance. In this case, I'm setting the base address, which is the GitHub API. And I'm also adding two default request headers, which are the authorization and user agent headers that are required to make a successful request to the GitHub API. Now, let's see if this is actually working by trying to fetch my GitHub account. So here's my GitHub username. And if I execute this request, you'll see that we get back the user details for my GitHub account. So our API is functioning as expected. So how do we introduce middleware to an HTTP client request? Now, this is a request that is outgoing from our application to some other system or service. The way you do that is by adding a new HTTP message handler to our GitHub service. And we're going to achieve that by implementing the delegating handler class. So I'm going to create a new folder inside of our API project, which I will call delegating handlers. Now inside of this folder, I'm going to define a few delegating handlers to show you what's possible with this approach. So let's call this one GitHub authentication handler. I'm going to implement the delegating handler base class, as I said I would. And what we can do is override the send or send async method to effectively implement the middleware pattern. So if I override send async, because I'm using the asynchronous overload, I can add behavior before or after the base send async request. Why did I call this delegating handler the GitHub authentication handler? This is the simplest use case for a delegating handler, and it involves taking in any authentication related stuff and applying it on the level of the delegating handler. So I want to try to add the authorization and user agent headers inside of my delegating handler. Now delegating handlers support dependency injection. So I can go ahead and inject an instance of the GitHub settings class using the options pattern. So I'm going to say GitHub settings. Let's give it a name of GitHub settings. And I'm going to inject it from the constructor by injecting I options of GitHub settings. And now I just need to set the value of my GitHub settings field from the options object. Now I can get rid of this step here. And what I was doing earlier was setting the default request header on the HTTP client. But in this case, I have access to the HTTP request and the HTTP request exposes a set of HTTP request headers. So this just becomes adding a new HTTP request header to my outgoing request inside of my delegating handler. So let's also pull the GitHub settings and set the values for the access token and the user agent. So this is how our GitHub authentication handler looks like. Now we need to apply it to our GitHub service HTTP client. How we do that is by saying add HTTP message handler and we specify our delegating handler type. So this is as simple as it gets. And an important consideration that we need to take into account is that we have to register our delegating handler as a transient service. So we need to say builder services add transient and we specify our GitHub authentication handler. I'm also going to simplify my strongly typed HTTP client configuration, and this is what we are left with. So the important code 
is this part here where we add our delegating handler and we configure it as a message handler for the GitHub service typed client. The reason that this has to be transient is because the delegating handler is applied for each individual HTTP request. So if you have a scoped service, that would mean that there is something stateful inside, but an HTTP request isn't stateful. So this is the approach that you have to take. So let me show you how this works in practice. I'm going to start the API again, only this time we're using our delegating handler. So let's send the same request to our API to fetch my GitHub account. So we're going to hit the breakpoint inside of the GitHub service, which is going to use the HTTP client and try to send a GET request to the GitHub API. We added a delegating handler to this HTTP client instance. And now if I press continue, you're going to see that we will land inside of the delegating handler send async method. We're going to set the request headers by adding the access token and the user agent. And now I'm going to pass the request along to the base implementation, which is going to do what it was doing before. So if I hit continue, we're going to get a response back in the Swagger UI, and you'll see that the user is properly returned from the GitHub API. So nothing significantly changed, but we managed to move the authentication related code into the delegating handler. Now this is really practical if you need to access a third party API to get the access token for each request before you can send the actual HTTP request that you want to be sending. For example, if you want to integrate with an identity provider like Keycloak, you would be using something like this to first get the access token on your backend and then call the Keycloak RESTful API to perform some operation. Let me show you one more example of adding another delegating handler, which is going to be on top of the one that we have here. So let's call this one logging handler. We're going to also implement the delegating handler base class, and I'm going to override the send async method. So here, I just want to add logging before and after my HTTP request. Let's inject an I logger into the logging handler class. I'm going to give it the logging handler as the generic argument, and let's inject this from the constructor. Now, inside of my body of the send async method, I'm going to do something slightly different. I'm going to add a variable that will hold my result and let's await it. And I'm also going to make the entire method asynchronous so that this can be awaited properly. Awesome. So now let me add some logging. Let's say logger log information. And this is what will execute before the HTTP request. And let's add one more information log after the HTTP request. So this will execute when my request completes. One more thing I could do here is say result, ensure success status code. And this call will make sure that our HTTP request completed successfully. Otherwise, it's going to throw an exception. So we're going to add a try catch statement here. And we're also going to be logging the exception before throwing it somewhere up the chain. So let's say logger log error, and let's just say the exception occurred and pass it the message. So HTTP request, let's say failed. All right, and let's move this into the body of the try statement. So we have our logging handler, which is going to ensure that our request completed successfully. Otherwise it's going to log the error and throw the exception up the call chain and we're also adding logging before and after the HTTP request. Now you could add more details than we have right here. This is enough for the example. Now, how do we add one more delegating handler to the request pipeline? We have to go back to where we configure the HTTP client. How we would configure our logging handler is by saying add HTTP message handler one more time. And it's important that we add it before the GitHub authentication handler if we want the logging handler to be first to execute. And of course, we need to register it as a transient service so that everything works correctly. Let's give this a try and see if both of the delegating handlers are going to execute. I'm sending the request to fetch a GitHub account for this username to our API. And we hit the first breakpoint in the GitHub service. So I'm going to press continue 
and we're going to land in the login handler. This is because we added it to the request pipeline before the GitHub authentication handler. So we're going to log that something happened before the request. And now if I try to go past the send async method, I'm going to land back in the GitHub authentication handler. So this is going to run my request. And if I continue, I'm going to get back the response from the GitHub API. Now we want to ensure that this is a success status code and this method succeeds. And now we can return the response from our API and observe it in the Swagger UI. I want to show you one more example of a delegating handler. So let's add one more class, which I will call retry handler. This handler is going to retry our HTTP request for a set number of times before it gives up and just throws the exception. So let's implement the delegating handler base class and we override send async. Now, how am I going to implement a retry policy? I could do something myself with a simple for loop and some try catch statements, but I'm going to use a library that is called poly to add some resiliency to our code. Now, poly has a bunch of pre-configured policies in the poly extensions HTTP package, which I advise that you take a look at. I'm going to use the base poly package because I want to create a policy on my own. So with the poly package installed, let's implement the retry handler. I'm first going to add a field that is going to contain my private read-only async retry policy. Poly comes with a bunch of policies out of the box and various resiliency mechanisms that you can implement. I'm going to use a simple one with just a retry mechanism in place. So the generic argument is going to be my HTTP response message and let's call this retry policy. So how do we create a policy using the poly library? Well, first you need to specify the policy class. We're going to use the generic version and specify HTTP response message. Then I'm going to say handle and we need to say which kind of exception we want to handle. If you want to handle any type of exception, you can just specify the base exception class, but we're going to say we want to handle the HTTP request exception. And now we can define our actual policy by calling one of the exposed methods. I want to call retry async and I just want to specify a fixed number of retries, let's say three, and this is enough to configure my policy. Now, how do I use this policy? Well, I need to change this code slightly. Let's make this asynchronous. And this time we need to handle our request using the retry policy. So we're going to say retry policy. We can call one of the available methods. I'm going to use execute and capture async. And we need to specify our function that is going to return the task that poly will try to execute. So we're going to grab the result of this inside of a policy result variable. So I'm going to say policy result and let me just align this so that you can see what is going on. So we're calling the execute and capture async method and we're passing in our base HTTP request as the argument. This policy is going to execute our HTTP request multiple times until it succeeds or just once if it succeeds on the first time. We need to use the policy result variable to see what actually happened. So I'm going to say policy result and I need to check the outcome. And if the outcome was a failure, then we're going to throw an exception. So I can say throw new HTTP request exception. We can say something went wrong and I can use the policy result to grab the final exception and pass it along as the inner exception argument. Otherwise, the HTTP request completed successfully and we can return it by saying policy result and access the result property. So this is how we can add some resiliency to our HTTP client. Although there are better ways to do this, I just wanted to show you the bare bones approach using a delegating handler and the poly library. We also need to configure this with the request pipeline. So let's add it, for example, before our logging handler. I'm going to say retry handler and let's add the retry handler as a transient service. So now we have our typed HTTP client, which is wrapped by free delegating handlers. So effectively free middleware and they're all going to execute one by one. Now to test our retry handler, 
let's update for example the logging handler inside of the logging handler i'm going to add one more field which is going to be a random instance let's instantiate it here and what i want to do is inside of the send async method right before we send the request with base send async we're going to flip a coin we're going to say if random next double is less than 0.5 so there is a 50 percent probability that we're going to roll something that is less or greater than 0.5 now if this is less than 0.5 let's throw an http request exception i'm specifically using this exception because it's the one handled by our retry policy so 50% of the time, this is going to throw an exception. In the retry handler, we are retrying the request three times, and that should be enough to get past this coin flip and return the result from the GitHub API. So let's see if this is the case. So let's send this request to our API one last time, and we're first going to land inside of the retry handler. We're going to use our async retry policy to execute our HTTP request. And if I step into the next delegating handler, we're going to get to our logging handler. So let's flip a coin and we rolled something that is less than 0.5. So we're going to throw an HTTP request exception. We're going to catch it here, then log the error and rethrow the exception up the call chain. This is going to be picked up by our retry policy, which is going to send the request again. Now we're going to land back in the logging handler and we're going to flip a coin one more time. Let's see what's going to happen this time. So again, we rolled something that was less than 0.5. We return back to the retry handler, which by chance managed to fail all of the retries and the outcome is a failure. And you can see that we have a final exception present on the policy result. So we're going to be throwing an HTTP request exception, which is going to propagate to our API consumer. If you got value out of this video about delegating handlers, then make sure to subscribe to my channel for more amazing videos. And until next time, stay awesome.